Hi, this is Marta from Ruby Soup with Pearl Juice, and today I am bringing you my November and December wrap up. Now, November was not a very good reading month for me. I actually only read one comic, uh, but December was fairly good. I read three novels and one comic, so that's why I'm putting these two months together. Let's get started. The one and only thing that I read in November was Natural Beauty by Nanna Johansson. Nanna Johansson is a Swedish writer and comic artist. She has written one short story collection and she has also now written five comic albums. And this is her latest one. And I have read all of her comic work. Uh, I like her quite a bit. She's very funny and she often has like really great satirical takes on gender and xenophobia and she talks about class really well. Uh, I, For instance, in her comic album before this one, uh, How to Cure a Feminist, uh, she had some really great stuff about class in that album. So I was really excited when I saw that this was out and I bought it and read it. And this was a 2017 release. And I have to say that this was actually a bit of a disappointment. Uh, like the, a lot of the jokes in here, like the opening segment, uh, feels very mean spirited. And I know she's like, I believe that the theme of this comic was supposed to be like, she was satirizing self-help and diet culture and that kind of stuff, which I kind of was like first really excited to kind of see her take on it. But I kind of thought that a lot of the jokes fell very flat. However, there was also things in here that I thought were really funny. And I'll kind of like give a little bit of a example a little bit here. Like for instance, here she has one panel where she's satirizing Downtown Abbey. And she's kind of talking about where she basically kind of shows like if Downtown Abbey was a little bit more realistic where she shows the people kind of like really mistreating and looking down at the servants. And she also has like another thing here. Oh. Like both of these, both of these jokes here work very well. Here she's making fun of guys that like infant to infantilize their girlfriends and here she's making fun of the concept friend zone. So there were a lot of jokes in here that, that really worked, but there was also unfortunately a lot that really fell flat. And like her comic albums, usually the thing that binds them together when she publishes them is that they have an on-occurring theme. Uh, like she has one called uh, Fulheten, like the ugliness, where she talks about beauty standards and other kind of things. And How to Cure a Feminist was very much a take on where she was criticizing the current Swedish political atmosphere. And those I thought were a little bit more better because it didn't have like such uneven jokes and the themes came out a little bit more clear. Uh, I thought that the themes in here were not handled very well. I thought she kind of really missed the mark a lot of times. And I'll just give it as an example. She has one joke about how she satirizes how blind people are the visually impaired are often kind of shown as being martial arts masters in pop culture. And that's a really old joke. I mean, everybody has made fun of that already. And, you know, it's, it's all fine and good to kind of make a joke about that. But then again, it's like, well, what other kind of visibility is there for the visually Im impaired? So I feel like those jokes always kind of make fun of this one instance where people are shown but then they don't talk about what an alternative could be and especially since Nanna Johansson herself is not disabled it kind of really falls flat personally for me uh, but like I said when she talked about the gender stuff in here like making fun of the friend zone comic so, sorry making f fun of the friend zone concept and when she was making fun of like for instance what it's like to be on tinder and guys keep sending you unwelcome pictures of their genitalia and that kind of stuff. It really, really worked. And I laughed a lot in some of the points here. But as I said, not her best work, but 
you know, definitely if you see this in the library, uh, borrow it and read it. Uh, it'll take you about a day to finish it and you're going to get some good laughs. The first thing I read in December was Death Note Volume 1. Uh, just last year, in 2017, I saw the anime Death Note and I really fell in love with it. I am still obsessed with it. And I am gonna now try and get through all of the manga and I actually even want to read the book Another Note. So in December I picked this up and I read this first volume. And like for those who don't know, Death Note is about a brilliant straight-A student called Light Yagami who is kind of disillusioned with life. And one day he comes across a Death Note that a Japanese death god, a Shinigami, has dropped in the human world. And you can use this notebook to kill people. And Light decides that he's going to use this notebook to rid the world of evil. So he starts killing criminals. And all is going well until the policemen start to investigate this and they even get this super famous worldwide famous detective L who has solved every single case that he's ever worked on and he only solves cases that are almost near impossible to solve. And it becomes a cat and mouse game between Light and L. And while, while this is going on, it kind of tackles themes of justice and what is right and what is wrong. Do the ends justify the mean and that kind of stuff. And this was very similar to the anime. I have to say that this is black and white. I'll try and show a little bit what it looks like in the inside. This is kind of what it looks like. It's black and white. And the anime had more colors. So, so far, I actually have to say I have enjoyed the anime a little bit better. But I have heard that as the manga goes on, it actually dwells more into the character depths and has a lot more nuances to it. So I'm this is a manga that I'm definitely going to continue. In fact, I am almost done with volume 2 now and I like it. And I'm excited to see what happens next. Then after that, I finished uh, Stay With Me by Oyabami Adebayo. Uh, this is a Nigerian book and a debut book that was published in 2017. And it was shortlisted for the Women's Bailey's Prize for Fiction. And otherwise became like a instant bestseller. And this has also been kind of circling around on booktube. And it tells the story of a woman called Yeyide. She has been married to her husband Akin for a while, but they haven't been able to produce children. And due to the social pressures of a marriage being incomplete unless there is a child produced, and the fact that Akin is like the first son in his family, which means that he is really expected to kind of produce grandchildren for, the fa for his parents, then, despite the fact that Yejida and Akin have kind of like promised each other that they'll be a monogamous couple and they won't practice polygamy, then the novel starts with that Akin has taken a second wife and Yejida feels really betrayed by this and kind of things just take off from there. And one thing that was kind of interesting is that I, sh I saw the author talk here in Stockholm when she was visiting and... This novel kind of goes back and forth from sometimes it follows Yeide and sometimes it follows Akin. And she said that she did this because she was first going to just write it from Yeide's point of view. But the problem is, is that she didn't realize that Akin was just too unlikable. And at the end of the novel, you don't really care what happens to him because you would just think of him as this horrible person who did this, this the, the horrible things. So she then decided to have Akin's point of view. And it really is interesting because it is like a dialogue between two people that are kind of unlikable in a lot of ways, but also really sympathetic at the same time, even Akin. And when you follow these two, you kind of see like 
how they're forced into these situations and how by trying to solve these problems by conforming to societal pressure then they do all these mistakes and one thing that I also really liked about especially was Yeide is that I thought that they kind of explored also a little bit about how lonely you can feel in these kinds of situations when you don't because she's a woman who isn't having children for a really long time. And she feels like really ostracized because of this. And she's also stigmatized because her mother died in childbirth. So she also bears the stigma of that. And she kind of grew up in a family where she wasn't exactly all that well liked because her stepmothers didn't really care for her. And she says several times that, oh, I want a child because the child will always be mine because Akin is going off now with other women, but the kid will just be mine and then nobody else will have my back except for this kid. And I thought that that was like really interesting and really very melancholy, of course, but a very kind of fascinating way how to talk about loneliness. And there's also a lot of politics in here. And how the politics gets waving in with the personal stuff is also really clever. I can't go into more than that because it's spoiler territory, but how the 1970s like military coups and the political unrest in Nigeria that was taking place then gets woven in with these two people's lives is really heartbreaking and really kind of this... So also it's kind of so fascinating. This is how this... This woman really knows how to really keep the pages turning like um i kind of think like i can say that if you start reading this you'll have trouble putting it down because it's almost like a thriller of sorts was was it's kind of like a personal thriller and that's also kind of really interesting how she kind of makes this into i mean it's basically very everyday life stuff but she's she makes everything so dramatic which, of course, everyday life is. I mean, everyday life, as Hari Picard said, is very complex stuff. And this book really captures that really well, that you're at the edge of your seat most of the time just to see what the people, what the characters will do next. So um, this book really surprised me. I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. Uh, I was actually a little bit wary because it was so hyped on book two, but I have to say I am drinking the Kool-Aid and I am saying the same thing as everyone else. This is... A fantastic debut it was one of the best books that i read last year and if you haven't read this yet definitely pick it up um it's really a fascinating account on societal pressure and politics and also it kind of deals with gender in a very interesting way and uh, as a final note there's a really interesting thing about masculinity in here when you follow a kin where there's a lot of kind of questions about what is expected of men and how men react to these expectations. And also a little bit of about how Akin then at some point, not to go too much into spoilers, but his relation to his kids is also kind of interesting because it kind of breaks societal norms and that kind of stuff. So yeah, definitely check this out. Worth the time. And the next book that I read in December was Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This is a book published in 1847 and it's one of these like classic um how would you like coming of age romance novels. Uh it follows a woman called Jane who grows up kind of poor and she then when she is about 19 she gets a job to be a governess for a guy called Mr. Rochester. And Mr. Rochester has kind of reluctantly adopted a girl called Adele and Jane arrives to teach Adele and of course she falls in love with Mr. Rochester and things kind of take off from there. This was a book that I really dragged my feet with for the first 200 pages. I had trouble getting into this. I didn't really like Mr. Rochester at all. I thought he was very arrogant and very whiny and full of self-pity. And that never changed. I never actually grew to like Mr. Rochester. But as the novel pro progressed, I actually ended up liking Jane quite a bit. And 
I won't go too much into that now because that's spoiler territory and I do plan on doing a more detailed review of this book a little bit later. But she grows a lot and becomes a lot stronger as the novel goes on and I really enjoyed that. However, this book has several other kinds of problems that you might want to know about before you pick this up. Uh, there's casual anti-Semitism in here and there's a very ableist uh, depiction of mental illness. Uh, so if that stuff um, upsets you, then be wary of that. But otherwise, I do get why people like this book. I, Jane is, is a very interesting character. But I don't think that this is going to be like my favorite book of all time. But I am glad that I read it. But it was a bit slow, but rewarding in the end. And the last book that I read in December was Year of Yes by Shonda Rhimes. I listened to this on audiobook and it was read by the author herself. Shonda Rhimes is a successful TV producer. She has created such TV shows as Grey's Anatomy and How to Get Away with Murder and Scandal, which, like, these are TV shows that have humongous followings and uh, are super famous. And in this memoir that's also part self-help, Shonda Rhimes talked about that she was kind of a introvert and she didn't really like doing things outside of her comfort zone and she never really said yes to things. So de she decided that she was going to have this one year and then it ended up being more than this a year. But she was going to have this one year where she was going to say yes to things. So she was going to, for instance, say yes to going on talk shows. She was going to say yes to going to parties. She was also going to say yes to doing things that she wouldn't normally do. And... The book is divided into several chapters where she talks about all these different issues that she then like ended up dealing with when she decided to say yes. And it's, I was a little bit wary when I was going into this book because it is a celebrity memoir and I'm not the biggest fan of self-help books. I kind of tend to hate them, but this book really surprised me. Um, if you can listen to it on audiobook, I recommend that you do that because Shonda Rhimes is such a lively storyteller and she really kind of brings the text alive when she's uh, narrating it. And she's also really funny, like how she delivers the jokes that she wrote in this book uh, are just super hilarious. I laughed several times when I was listening to this book. Uh, so keep your eyes out for the, for the audiobook because it really is rewarding. But besides that, I really liked a lot of the themes that she kind of brought up and tackled in this book. And it was a lot of things that I think like a lot of people can relate to. And she also talked about certain things that were a little bit more specific. Like Shonda Rhimes is a black American woman and she's kind of known for making TV shows that kind of bring diversity like she's done tv shows with uh people uh, like a big people of color cast and a cast of futures lgbtq plus characters and she talked about how like when she gets interviewed and that kind of stuff then people still ask very condescending questions like why is diversity important and how do you as a black woman do such and such things and I thought that that was really insightful, how she was talking about like how she is being so stigmatized in, the, in this very white dominated area. And I also liked a lot of the things that she ended up doing for say, um, by saying yes. Like she talks about how she learned to take a compliment and she related that to how women are actually kind of taught to be humble and modest and not take compliments like to deflate them and how she used to do this and she then talks about how she kind of had to teach herself to say thank you when she got a compliment and that I think that's really relatable I think like that's going to struggle a chord with a lot of women readers uh, and she also talked about saying yes to spending time with your loved ones which I thought was really interesting the way she talked about toxic friendships in this book I thought, like, not only is it kind of important to talk about it, but it was very insightful how she talked about how by saying yes to actually confronting her friends for their bad behavior, she realized that she had a lot of toxic friends and then she had to kind of 
to learn to let go of these friendships, which I really enjoyed. One of my problems with self-help books that I often feel like it's very much on the surface and it's not really talking about any real issues. And this book actually does talk about real issues. And Shonda Rhimes is actually, she's quite clever. She very often says that, okay, I understand that I'm talking about this from a very successful career woman point of view. But like, if you're like, for instance, a cashier or you have some other kind of job, then you can like do this instead. And I really liked that, how she was kind of understanding that she was talking from a certain point of view and she was trying to talk about how you can then take these issues and do do certain things from a certain other kind of point of view. Another thing that I liked about it is that like so Shonda Rhimes does not idealize herself. She she often shows herself as being very socially awkward and and kind of doing things that are a bit awkward and I thought that that was just delightful. I think like a lot of people who are going to resonate with that. So yeah, I I won't go on too much about it, but uh, definitely pick it up. It it actually is really good. So those were the books that I read in December in 2017. What books did you read in December? Or have you read any of these books that I mentioned in this video? Comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. I would also like to say thank you because I have just hit 54 subscribers and I am really happy and I'm really thankful. And if there, if you guys have anything you want to talk about, just comment down below. And if you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video.